Happy Sabbath Church. Good afternoon, a very good morning and good evening from everywhere where you are watching us from. We welcome you to New Life SDA Church, 5th Ngong Avenue in Nairobi, Kenya. Now today has been a deaconate and community service uh, Sabbath and we want to thank God for the programs that we have had uh, since morning. And uh, we want to welcome you to another session where we are going to learn more how we are offering our services to the church and to the community. Now, we know very well that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, he traveled far and wide and he used to meet different people in different places, in the synagogue, in the shores of the lakes, and uh, uh, by the mountains, and he was ministering to their needs, both uh, physical and spiritual. Now, when Jesus ascended uh, to heaven, he left this work to his disciples, who are us today. And to help us, um, uh, to, I mean, dissect how we continue to serve in this ministry, I have with me uh, four members of uh, the panel who we are going to look at how the church um, and, and the disciples of today are ministering to the church and also to the community. To um, start off, I'll uh, ask my panelists to introduce themselves. We'll start with the, on my right hand side. My name is Elder Zachary Ochako. I am Elder in Charge of the Prayer Cell Department of the New Life SDA Church. Thank you, Elder. And then we come to my sister here. Okay. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. My name is Nora Munda. I am a member of the Deaconate Department. Welcome. Thank you very much. And then my sister. Happy Sabbath and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bore Martha. I'm representing the Adventist Community Service Department. And uh, last but not least, we have on my extreme left. Uh, good afternoon. I am uh, Boaz Munga, the elder in charge of the Welfare Department. Okay. So we welcome all of you to be with us. Um, now, um, as recorded in the book of uh, Acts chapter 6, um, as the church was growing, it was realized that as the disciples were ministering, there was a shortage in the ministry to serving of food to uh, the widows especially. Sister Nora, is the role of the deacon to serve food in the church? Um, thank you, uh, Brother Moses. Um, the role of the deacon is not only to serve uh, food in the church. Uh, the deacon is a ministry, the deaconate is a ministry whose goal is to evangelize through service in the church and the community um, at large. And other than that, it has got some objectives that um, that guides the service in the church. For example, the deaconate assists the pastoral in ensuring that church services are carried out seamlessly. And also, they give service to members of the church through uh, meeting the physical, spiritual, and emotional needs of the members. Uh, their other objective is to help the church leadership in administering um, ordinances of baptism, Holy Communion, um, and also supporting members during funerals. And so when we look at the deaconry, deaconry it's not only serving food. Mm. Yeah, it cuts across so many other areas. Thank you. Looks like quite a wide um, area of service. Um, Sister Martha, how does the um, community service uh, department uh, fit into the church um, in our today setting? 
Uh, thank you so much. Um, for a while, or rather for a long time, Adventist Community Service Department had been domiciled in the Department of Women Ministry, but right now the church has actually uh, created the Department of Community Services to involve every church member, meaning that ACS, which is Adventist Community Service Department, is actually a holistic ministry whose mission is to save the community in Christ Jesus' name. And by this, the purpose of this holistic ministry is to do what the mission of the church is, which is to proclaim good news to the world for salvation and also to demonstrate the love of God to those people who are in need. And in need here, we mean people who have different needs that actually some of which my sister Nora said and this is evidenced in the ministry of Jesus Christ, which he did while he was here on earth. Um, going down to the objectives, therefore, it means, excuse me, it means that uh, the Adventist Community Service Department is a channel through which the local SDA church or Seventh-day Adventist church, therefore, will use to address the needs of the immediate community of membership, within and even without the church, that is the neighborhood. And you may want to call this a ministry that uh, actually does outreach in terms of humanitarian ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I know we have the Adventist uh, Development Relief Agency, which also does a similar thing, but SES serves the church community in view of the global mission I will go, which is actually currently going on. So specifically, we want to ensure that we have access uh, to services that contribute towards the alleviation of poverty in, uh, and prevention of suffering among the members. We want to ensure that uh, and focus on feeding families that are in distress within the outside church and even those who are within the church. It will also focus on the distribution of foods or clothes to ensure that we clothe the naked. In short and in brief, it actually uh, it is a compassionate ministry, which is actually meant for the poor, it's meant for the hurting, and it's meant for the victims of injustice. So it's actually doing exactly what Christ Jesus did while he was in earth in preparation for his return. Thank you. Well, um, from your explanation, it sounded more like also looking at the welfare of uh, uh, Christians in the community. But then, Elder Munga, how then does your department come in? Yeah, when Bore was speaking, he really touched on what we normally perceive as welfare issues. Yes. But we still, the church still came up with a welfare department. Uh, perhaps the reason was that there are still those needs that still will escape the attention of the deaconry, may still escape the attention of the community service uh, uh, department, and uh, the welfare should come into that. So the way we perceive welfare, uh, welfare is a type of uh, soul willing ministry also, mm -hmm. just like the rest, and not merely a service. Mm -hmm. So when we look at it as a type of soul willing ministry, we are able to focus on the broader goal of the church, which is basically soul winning. So it is an exercise of sympathy, uh, just like uh, community service, and love in the home, the church, and the world. And uh, we, we basically are able to conceive uh, these ideas of sympathy, uh, love for others, if we die in Christ daily. There's no other way to, uh, to, to conceive this in our, in our, in our sinful self. And the goal of the welfare department is to address the needs of those who are less fortunate uh, based on the precepts set in the Bible and of course reinstated, uh, reinstated in our, or reinforced in our church manual and also in our, uh, 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 the writings we find in the spirit of prophecy, whether you read the ministry of healing or testimonies to the church. That is how I'll describe it. So there are some aspects of... Uh, the welfare ministry that are not covered by the earlier two departments, including the last expense uh, 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 function, uh, the insurance that we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we 
try to ask our members to join. So those, those, that will be one of the aspects that we look at that we may not find in uh, the, the, the other departments. But like, just like the other departments, we are also, uh, um, we try to be there what? The eyes that see those in need and bring it to the attention of the relevant departments in the church. Wonderful. Um, you mentioned that the welfare ministry is a ministry of empathy all the way to the home. Now, we also have another department which essentially takes care of the churches or what we call the home church, elder. Maybe you can tell us more. Thank you so very much. I wish to, from the onset, mention that we have the prayer cell department. This department uh, plays a key role in spiritual matters of the home churches. Home churches are those churches that we come from an estate. In that estate has a prayer cell. The prayer cell is what we call home church. The home church is headed by a leader who is assisted by an elder in spiritual matters. And uh, this church, being a large church, uh, one of the largest churches in Kenya and in Nairobi, we have 29 prayer cells. Uh, uh, these prayer cells, are, uh, they do functions and roles which are special in nature. And some of the roles are discipleship. People meet or members meet in small groups to discuss about how to evangelize, how to socialize, how to create uh, good leadership in terms of uh, nurturing talent in the church. They have also a role of social interaction. That social interaction means that we members take care of the so their social uh, needs, namely weddings, funerals, sicknesses, and even weddings, where those members that my elder has mentioned, sometimes when a member is believed, it is the prayer cell, leader, and elder who coordinate this before it comes to the main church for, for adjudication or help. In, in essence, therefore, um, the prayer cells also, I have said, they have hospitality. They do things which um, are normally not done inside the church. They help one another in their own estates. I want to mention that this church has uh, developed that prayer cell and some of the churches that we have today, like Karangata, Mount Olives, and a new one which we intend to establish called Hills, Hills uh, View, have been um, founded from the prayer cell. And it is envisaged that in the long run, we will have many churches in the estates where we live. Thank you. Amen, amen. And it is very interesting to see that um, New Life Church has, uh, would, would you call them uh, home churches, yes. which are an extension of, of the church? Yes. And Elder, you've mentioned sometimes that um, when our members are faced with the issues at their home, like funerals, um, the home churches are the first ones to, to be involved. But, uh, Madam Nora, I believe deaconry is also involved in this. How do you work together with the, the prayer cells to be able to achieve uh, the objective of serving uh, the home church? Okay. Um, the pr we work together with the prayer cell in the sense that the prayer cell leaders are our, uh, we can call them the middle, middle ground. The link. The link, sorry, thank you. Uh, between us and the members. So when they have issues um, at the prayer cell level, then it's the prayer cell leader in that, in that case who comes and reports whatever is happening. And if there be need, for example, for some visitation to take place, probably a member is bereaved or there is sickness or there is any other need that is required for the church to participate in, we get the information 
from the prayer cell leader and from there we take it up and attend to those issues. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I know very well um, the home churches are basically based in the community. And uh, when we are talking about community service, how do they come in when you are doing your services? Um, thank you so much. <clears throat> As I said, uh, the Adventist Community Service endeavors to establish a working relationship with other departments to be able to tell the world about the love of Jesus through different and diverse works. So um, we therefore uh, strive to do joint missions to the needy in the community, more or less what we call in the corporate sector uh, C CSR. Um, we say that the mission of the church is, of the remnant church is, I will go which seeks to involve all the church members in reaching the world. That means inspiring and equipping them to use their God-given abilities and gifts and spiritual gifts as well to witness to the people who are needing the service of Christ. When the deaconate or community, when, when the deaconate uh, department or the prayer cells uh, have reached out to us with issues that uh, require attention, as the community service, which actually involves each and every one of us, we therefore rally resources together with these particular communities so that we are able to distribute those things that are able to be distributed depending on the need that is on the ground. So it means we rally resources together to put up um, that response that is required at that particular time. For example, I want to give an example of um, uh, a joint effort that was done by a number of church members to put up, a sh to put up shelter for a needy family that uh, came up as a result of one of their parents dying. And when one of us went for the funeral, we discovered that they didn't actually have a shelter. In a, as a matter of fact, they were living in those shanties where you use polythene papers to make. And it was very important that then they needed shelter. That's one of the things that we, we, we do as a community uh, service department. And resources came together. And I think it was a, a need that was brought to us by not actually a member of the community service, but I think it was welfare. So such things will come to our attention and we will then rally support together and put up resources to do this. All this is achievable through a collective effort of the departments that are required in the church. There is power in numbers and together we can be able to achieve. I want to quote what Sister White says in regard to this. She says in the book Ministry of Healing, um, page 17, paragraph one. She says, motivate, equip and mobilize Seventh-day Adventist members worldwide to meet unconditionally the expressed needs of people around them. Thus, fostering a trust relationship between Adventist church and their surrounding community and nurturing people in Jesus toward a restorable, abundant life. So it is something that we cannot do by our own. In, as a matter of fact, some of the things that we do are what ADRA brings to us because ADRA, if you know about ADRA, is more of administrative. But here in church, the social corporate responsibility is more of informal. So I'll be, I mean, in a better position to quickly respond to a need without going through channels of administration. Thank you, Sister Martha, for that elaborate um, um, explanation of the involvement of uh, other departments. Now, I know um, on Sabbath, uh, during Sabbath like this, we also receive quite a lot of uh, welfare um, concerns. And um, perhaps you could also elaborate how um, you work uh, maybe with the deacon or uh, community service department, how you handle those uh, situations. Yeah, there are many cases that arise, and uh, not every person who works in our church would identify, for instance, with a prayer cell. Mm. Yeah. 
So those are the gaps we come in to, to fill. In some cases, members will come who belong to, say, a given prayer cell, and they have a need. We usually refer them to the prayer cell because the prayer cell becomes like a, a, a more rigorous vetting agency than, say, the welfare department because we may not be uh, uh, having knowledge of that particular person. So we, we really are dependent on other departments of the, of the church, including the deep country. So for Deacon, for instance, sometimes they will receive uh, uh, a request and they will decide that this request seems like more of a welfare issue. And uh, normally those issues revolve around more of personal issues that uh, uh, run towards financial challenges of some sort, uh, which we may not want to mention. So, say, so yes, we work with the various departments and we receive cases and some cases are better referred to other departments. Some cases will be referred to, to, to welfare. Okay. I think I've given just examples. Uh, another example I can give is um, when our members come from the prisons, mm -hmm. they're usually challenged mm -hmm. in many ways. Uh, where would you place them? It's very difficult. So sometimes they end in the welfare department. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes we may address their issues without uh, it fa fast enough. And uh, that is how we work with other departments of the church. Okay. Yeah. I'm also informed of a situation where we have our young people. Um, you know, maybe some of them uh, come to uh, the city brought by uh, the fact that they are coming to study. And when they finish their studies, um, you know, they, they're perhaps looking for opportunity for employment and they have to start from here. Um, do you face uh, similar circumstances? Yeah, we face many uh, circumstances of that nature, mm. and we usually try as much as possible to, to help. Yeah. The people who come to this church, maybe I should not mention uh, how we help them because there'll be a floodgate. <laughs> 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 who come to this church and they'll tell you, I don't even have transport going back home, mm. so we have to still look at them. I don't have something to go and eat today. We normally keep some stock of uh, dry foods, which are again donated by members of the church. Mm. Uh, so that is kept handy uh, in charge. So somebody will walk back home with something in his hand. Uh, so we receive so many cases of that sort. And sometimes we can, go, we can go an extra mile to organize a few church members to assist a particular case, mm. if, even if it's a student here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much, Elder. I'm, I'm reminded of um, a circumstance when uh, Jesus was... Uh, with his disciples and he was ministering to uh, the crowd. This is recorded in uh, Matthew chapter 14, um, if you start from verse 13, going all the way to 16. And when the day was almost ending, the disciples had looked at these people and they, they, they saw them as being very many. And um, what they were, in their minds, they were saying, we have finished our mission for the day, so these people should go away. So they approached Jesus and were telling him, uh, let the people go back and, and, and eat from home, you know. But Jesus told them, they are not going anywhere. It is your responsibility to feed them. Elder, how does this work in the, in the home church? I mean, how do you take care? How does the, do the prayer cells take care of the needs within the... the, the how do they identify the needs and, uh, and take care of the needs of, uh, within the home church? Thank you so very much. When the home church meet, normally they have a schedule of their meetings. Apart from prayers, they have other social activities that they perform. They identify those in the society who are in need of help, of welfare, either food or shelter. And they help them from their own sources. If the, their sources are not adequate, then we forward such cases to the main church for help. But most of the cases are um, dealt with at the grassroots, at the home churches. So these home churches still play a very important role in assisting the church and the membership and some of the potential members who want to be in the fold of the, the Seventh-day Adventists. They are assisted in that manner. Amen. Amen. Um, 
the New Life Church membership, I believe it could be running into 4,000. Um, Sister Nora, with this kind of big church, how do you manage as a deaconate department to meet all the needs of, uh, of, of the church? Um, okay, thank you very much, Brother Moses. Um, uh, within the deaconate, we have quite varied needs, so many needs. Uh, for example, you've just mentioned the numbers. We have numbers the tune of 4,000. And at any one time on a Sabbath, we record membership. Um, people who come to church, we record about over 1,000, sometimes 800, 1,000, 1,200. And we find that we have needs like um, the needs for chairs. We have need for, uh, to ensure that everybody is seated and comfortable during the service. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have other, uh, um, other, other services that we support the church with. For example, during baptism, we may have needs for gowns because of the large membership, especially during baptism, gowns for baptism. Uh, we may have other needs that come along as a result of these large members. So how do we meet the needs of the members? Uh, where, we, where we can, uh, the church actually supports. The church gives us a certain percentage of um, uh, in our budget to budget we give, the, we give them the budget and they give us some money with which we try to meet some of our needs but I can say also that uh, most of these needs we get assistance from the church membership uh, the church membership once issues are brought for example many times we have asked members uh, in the past issues to do with the need for chairs and we have had families offering to buy chairs for the church and that one has kind of helped to meet. So sometimes we buy using the budget we are given, and sometimes we approach members, and members are willing to, most of the time, they are willing to support the deaconate in order to get uh, whatever we want. And it's not only this. As my uh, fellow panelists have mentioned, that um, we depend, that we get support in terms of food and clothing. Uh, this has also happened to us in the deaconate department. Um, sometimes when we put it forward to the members, they are the all members, it is put forward to all members. They bring us foodstuffs, they bring us clothing, and by this we've been able to reach out to many members and also support other departments. For example, when the community uh, service is going out there to evangelize, then we, if we have maize, we have, uh, uh, sorry, if we have foodstuffs, we have clothing, we give them to the department so that they can go, even as they evangelize, they share this. So basically, we have a lot of needs, and these needs are met by the membership of the church. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Nora, on how we basically involve everyone. This is uh, from our previous uh, strategy of involving everyone in the church, isn't it? Um, I believe um, from the community service perspective, um, maybe you could also tell us how you are able to um, meet the, 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 your needs of how when you are going to do your service. Are you also funded, as uh, Nora says? Um, thank you. As I mentioned, SES department is a caring, Christ-centered resource in the community and in the church for that matter. Adventist Community Service Department is a ministry of compassion. And being a ministry of compassion, our greatest need is to feel, to, to feel loved. Unless you feel loved, then the other needs, or unless somebody demonstrates love to us, to those who are in need, then the other needs may not actually come forth. I like the example you gave that Jesus told the disciples they needed to feed the people instead of sending them away. Jesus was simply trying to show them love, to demonstrate love to them so that they will be ready to receive the word of God when it is spoken to them. So we, we have needs 
because we have children in the streets. Some of them, we have seen them come to this church. They are seeking for love. And apart from love, they are also seeking to be uh, taken care of physically, clothing, food, and things like those. There are those children who even belong to our members here who are, are not in a position to take care of themselves. And they lack school fees. Some of them are out of school. And that is an aspect which, as a, as a community service department, we need to come in and actually assist and support. Some of them are just psychological issues. You can realize that there is so much that is going on in the world now, and people need to be are compassionate to others in terms of just being close to each other. What does that mean? It therefore means that as a department, we need members of the church to be active to help us uh, take care of these particular needs. And it does not only require us to be actively there, but we need, we need to be visible in the community in the way in which we minister to these people so that we can show how Christ himself ministered, and only in his way. So it means that we need members to be actually true assets. You know, an asset that can actually be there and are available to the neighborhood to be used as tools in this particular service. It means, therefore, that as members of the church, we need to be effective in serving Christ to be in ministering to these particular people. So it must begin with uh, being very careful in terms of making a deliberate effort to listen, to hear what these people need, and to understand if, from what perspective are their needs actually being brought to us. Because in many cases, some needs uh, may not be genuine. In many cases, those genuine cases are actually past because there are those other ones that are ingenuine that have been taken care of because of one or two other reasons. So that's why we are saying we need to be deliberate to ensure that we do only that which Christ Jesus expects us to do. It therefore requires that uh, we need to have a healthy and a growing local church. And having a healthy and a growing local church will actually lead us to being very practical and real in offering tangible hospitality to the people who are in need in the society and in the community. This way, even those who are new to the church, who we have evangelized to and they have come to Christ, we will be able to be taken care of without forgetting the needs of those ones who have been sitting in the church for a while. And not only also forgetting that sometimes we may need to take care of the church members so much and forget to look around for those who have been newly baptized through evangelism, through some of these community service that we have done, and we forget about them. So we need to be very alert to ensure that our, the needs that we are actually having around are catered for well, equally, and across the board. Thank you so much, Sister Martha. And um, you mentioned um, a healthy and growing local church. That's a very key thing. Elder, you will come to explain to us, uh, I mean, what it means to have a healthy and growing local church as regards to the, the prayer cells. But I want to invite um, our audience, both here in church and those who are watching us online, please feel free uh, to be able to share with us um, if you have any uh, item that you may want clarified as regards the ministries that we are talking about today, community service, deconate, the prayer cell, or even uh, the welfare ministry. You can send to us um, um, uh, your comments or messages through the uh, social media platform, YouTube or Facebook, and we'll be able to take it up. If you have your question in the audience, um, we'll be able to give you an opportunity. Um, Elder, earlier on you mentioned that uh, when you are serving uh, the welfare needs of uh, the church members and those who are around us, um, that when they come, sometimes you have uh, dry food that they go with. Um, how do you manage to do this? Is it that you have a stock of dry food? How do we manage to do this? Uh, it is through the 
church members. Uh, so the church is what holds us together. So if the, if the church responds adequately, then we are able to get the things that we, we need. I want to put it this way. We normally need some financial resources. We need foodstuffs. We normally do the promotions and we get them. But that is too basic. Mm. Basic in the sense that assume we had all the financial resources that we require for our functions. But there's nobody to, to make a visit to the hospital or to go to prison or to be with that person who is uh, described as a, what, a stranger and give him some accommodation. You see, those financial resources will not achieve the goal. So we, we believe that our greatest resource again is the church membership. And it comes back to the quality of the church members and the healthy uh, church that we have, uh, that maybe Elder will expound on. So that is how I would want to explain it, that uh, we will uh, uh, be achieve our goals much more easily if our members give themselves uh, their time. They must have, they should allocate time for others who are in need. So it's not about the money or the food that we receive, but about the members that are willing to do that which has a reward. If you read Isaiah 58, God says if you do these things, if you clothe the naked, the true fast, there's a reward for it. And the same is said in uh, Matthew 25. Yeah, there's a reward for the activities that we do about uh, helping the, 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 those who are less fortunate in society. Yeah. Elder, we keep hearing a healthy, growing local church. Um, how can we achieve a healthy, growing local church? I want to respond as follows. We require a healthy home church by all of us participating in the affairs of the local prayer cell. Uh, we have noted in the past from the reports that we get from the prayer cell leaders that some of us do not in any way participate or attend the prayer cell sessions. If you do not attend the prayer cell session, you may not be helping the church in building that capacity of bringing people to the fold of Jesus Christ. I, I want to also forge that uh, some of our members in the past also do not also want to be associated with any of the prayer cells of any of the 29 prayer cells that are there. So we also urge that we as members of New Life SDA Church kindly, if we want to build a vibrant church, belong to a prayer cell. Belong to a prayer cell. I want also to urge those that are a Sabbath school members. If you belong to Kebera, Ngong, Karura, Wayaki Way, kindly register. If you register, that is the only way that we can build you as a person and address the issues that may affect you in terms of prayer and in terms of social needs, like those welfare needs that have been articulated by my dear elder. I want also to say how to build a vibrant church is that members who are newly baptized, members who are newly baptized, we have circulated the numbers or mobile numbers for church, for the prayer cell leaders. So that if you stay in one of the prayer cells, you pick the number and then belong to that prayer cell. That is the only way that we can build capacity in which we can build a vibrant church within the main church. May the Lord bless you. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. Um, at this juncture, we want to invite if there are any questions. Uh, I don't know if we have any comments from our online uh, viewers. Um, any member of the congregation who may have, uh, I can see there's a hand behind. Maybe you could come uh, here so that you can be able to uh, ask your question. Um, I saw a hand up there. Please come. 
come, come in front and ask your questions so that we can be able to get an opportunity to address. Yes, as they come, um, maybe uh, Sister Nora can be able to um, just give us, um, if someone wanted to get involved in, uh, because as Elder said, we actually need uh, members of the church to be involved, uh, to give themselves so that they can be able to, to serve. How can, uh, if I'm interested in serving in the deaconry, how can I be able to get involved? Thank you very much for your question. Um, the deaconate, um, the membership of the church is very large. And therefore, we need as many people as possible to participate as members of this department. To become a member of this department, first and foremost, um, uh, the person has to be a member of this church. Uh, their membership must be in this church. Secondly, there must be people who are consistent in church attendance because deaconate, deaconate service, the services of deaconate are required throughout the week, not only on Sabbath. Any time during the week you can be called. And given that we have very high number, very large numbers in this church, we need as many as possible. So number one, I have said, you need to be a member of this church. Number two, you need to be someone who is consistent in coming to church. It would be difficult to work with you if you are here once a month. So we need to have someone who is consistent. Number three, like the Bible says when the seven deacons were being chosen, the person has to be of good repute. Their reputation and character should be good so that even as they serve, it may not raise um, uh, questions, so to say, in the minds of the membership. So just like those qualities that were, that were written in the Bible, when the seven deacons were being, uh, were being uh, anointed to become deacons, we too need that. But the most important, you must be a member of the church, you must be consistent, you must have um, the right character. We may take you um, and nurture you to become who a deacon or a deaconess should be, but basically those three areas are very important for you to become a deaconess. And by the way, we need very many. The, the, the harvest is a lot and the reapers are few. We need so many people to come and assist in this department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Elder, you had a question? Uh, thank you. The deacons and the deaconesses are doing a good job. But according to our manual, the role of the deacons and the deaconesses should be strictly to the members of the church. Enrich program to the members of the church, not going outside. Because we have various departments. We have AMO, we have women ministry, we have all departments. Now for us to work effectively, the deacons, they are the custodian of the church property. And the church property involves even our souls. And therefore, the deacon should strictly concentrate on the church members, not going outside. Am I right? Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder. Um, Elder is insisting that the deacons should stay in the church. Um, Madam Martha, you, do you agree with him that uh, when going out is the domain of the community service and not the deacons? Um, he has said that according to the church manual, I may not be um, the authority of that, but uh, as much as maybe the church manual requires them to be within and uh, take care of the needs of the church members, including our souls, as you put it, uh, I think it would be good that we rally resources together and be able to also visit people outside there because Adventist uh, community service um, ministry or department, for example, like you are saying, how do we get involved, requires that every church member is involved. 
And this deacon and deaconess is also a church member. So and in one way or another, we will also need them to be involved in this community service because there could be a strength that Sister Nora has or so-and-so has that I may not have in reaching out to that particular community uh, outside there. So I would um, say that it is important that they also participate in this. And perhaps even within the church, they will actually be reaching out to the community because there are those ones who come in and they are in need and they do not know uh, how to go about issues. So this deaconess and deacon will be able to have that eye and notice that so and so has come, is not our regular member, and they need support in one way or another. So they are important both in church and I think outside, but yes, uh, it is also important to be guided by the church manual and the policy, as he said, and then we can be able to do things accordingly. Amen. But I also want to add uh, that uh, the Adventist Community Service uh, Ministry does not bar anyone from coming in and being involved in serving. As a member of this department, even at your place of work, you have work to do to reach out to a neighbor who is poor, who is uh, hurting in one way or another, remember it is a compassionate ministry. And being a compassionate ministry, it therefore means that we have to reach out to demonstrate the love of Christ by all means in whichever thing that we do. Thank you. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Elder Munga, um, if I was to be involved in the welfare ministry, how, how do I uh, reach you or how do I get uh, involved if I'm interested, for example, in serving in the welfare ministry? Yeah. I'm a member of the church, but I don't know how I can be involved. I, I mean, from what you have elaborated, I may be interested in, in, in getting involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody is welcome uh, to participate. Um, and uh, this, uh, the, the the, the levels of participation we mentioned are open. If, uh, if we want to visit a hospital, nobody bars you from entering the hospital ministry. If you want to visit the sick or a, a person in prison, nobody bars you from doing that. Okay, that's a very basic level. But the, the overall idea is this, that uh, every single Christian, by the definition of Christianity, is actually in welfare ministry. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can be a Christian in the true sense and you fail to be in that ministry, yes. So uh, that is why um, uh, when, uh, when we say we are Christ-like, we do the things that Christ did and the things that Christ did was that he ministered. When, when we are ministering, we are basically in the welfare ministry. So in short, I invite everyone to allow Christ to change him, uh, to die in Christ daily, and be empowered to give that naturally, not by a struggle. Yeah. Amen. Um, as we wind up, um, we have been having um, um, our four departments. Uh, today was the deaconate and community service, and we were basically exploring how um, the deaconate and the community service departments together with the welfare ministry and uh, uh, prayer cells serve both the church and the community. So as we are winding up, Elder, what would be your concluding remarks in how we serve the church and the community through the prayer cells? I want to do the parting short by saying the following. Number one, for those home churches who we call the prayer cell, all of us should participate fully. Do not only participate when you have an interest. Let us register with a particular prayer cell. Secondly, there are so many of us who are members of the prayer cell, but still you do not want to subscribe to be a leader of the prayer cell. I have cases to point that most people are apprehensive or reluctant to accept leadership of a prayer cell. To 
be a true Christian, leadership is part and parcel of your calling. Thirdly, I want to urge the Sabbath school members and the newly baptized members of our church to register with your home church, that is the prayer cell, because that is where your spiritual and social needs will be addressed adequately. Do not wait for a challenge in your life so that you come and raise your hand or raise a question that I belong to this prayer cell, but I was not assisted. Finally, there are those in those prayer cells who complain that they have never been feasted kindly if you know that the prayer cell has uh, ignored visiting you, you can raise that one to us so that such issues can be addressed. We want all of us to feel part and parcel of the prayer cell. This church can only grow and go with the, our mission statement. I'll go if all of us participate in this lagoon. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Nora. Okay, um, before I give my comments, maybe I'll just want to answer uh, one of the elders, the elders who have spoken about the role of deaconate being within the church. Yes, deaconates are the custodians of church property and even the taking care of members. These same members, other than just meeting their needs, they also have some other personal needs that deaconate attend to. And within our deaconate department, the church, um, the deaconate has seen the need of having visitation ministry within deaconate in order to reach out to members' other needs. So actually, as we do visitation, it is a ministry within deaconate, which requires the deaconate members to visit the church members who are in need. So as you can see, our mandate is not only within the church. We do our service within the church, but we also do outreach. We go and minister to the needs of students in schools. We go and minister to the needs of uh, the sick in the hospitals. Because actually, if you read Acts chapter 6 uh, from verse 1, as the disciples were being chosen, one of the reasons was so that they can attend to the needs of the widows and the orphans. And to attend to the needs of the widows, and the, it was not only, I'm sure it was not only within the, the church setting at that particular time. For you to meet the needs of these members, you have to reach them where they are. And so actually by doing that, we are uh, following the mandate of the deaconate, doing visitations, praying with members, supporting them when they are probably bereaved and in any other need that they may have. Otherwise, I want to say that um, deaconate is important. It is um, the one that takes care of almost all the activities within the church. And as I said before, we need people. The workers is a lot. The reapers are few. We are all gifted in different ways. There are those people who can pray. There are those people who can minister to a sick person. There are those people who can minister to a bereaved person. So we need everybody to be involved in Deaconate Department in order to ensure that the mission I will go evangelizing to me of evangelizing to the members is achieved. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Nora, I observe that um, in ministering to the church uh, members, uh, both here and, and uh, where you are saying you reach them, uh, the Deacon Department bought uh, a van, isn't it? Yes, yes. And uh, how is this helping you with the, the ministry? Okay, the, uh, the Deacon Department bought a van and it's actually helping in the ministry in terms of um, doing these so-called visitations. Yeah, a almost every weekend we have members who are reaching out to members out there who are in need. So the, the van enables people to reach people even who are very far away from here. Sometimes we use the van even to attend to funerals, members' funerals back in their home, um, the up country. And so the van is uh, serving the church well. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
Sister Martha, community service. What's your concluding remarks? We are all living witnesses for the Advent hope as we prepare for Christ's return. We seek to be transforming agents in our community by following the method of Jesus Christ to bring help and hope through ministries of compassion in his name according to the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 16 to 21. This requires dignity, inclusivity, confidentiality and excellence. Let's strive to be men and women of God who work in excellence. God bless you. Um, we still have another question from the audience, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Sister Martha. Yes. Just come on to the stage. Uh, Okay, so resource mobilization. Uh, na question yangu iko na layer tatu ya kwanza ni acquisition so ni kwa na takatuku jua kuwa tukiangalia numbers do mlisema ni about 4000 on paper lakini on any given sabbath probably 800 to 1000 now tukiangalia 4000 as the ideal then na jaribu kuwaza kuwa wenda ku kuna kwa na shortfall ama there's a likelihood ya shortfall ya resources ambao mnaweza mka peana so ni kwa nauliza mna kwa na mikakati gani haswa and how frequently do you put in place such mikakati ili muweze kupata hizi resources kudil na that possible shortfall number two kuhusu distribution nilisikia uh, one of the panelists hapa kisema kuwa nyakati zingine kuna ile fear ya risk ya opening the floodgates ya wale ambao wenda wakataka usaidizi basi as you try to mitigate that risk because it seems like a real risk how do you ensure that enough information filters out to those who would be in need such that no case that is indeed in need is left out, okay? Number three, to Nikuhusu, it's a question of, around retention. Now, suppose there's a needy case, Amba Imekuja, Akatafta Usaidizi Akasaidiwa. Now, Wam Nakwana Mikakatia Kuensure, Kuwa Munajua, Ninani Aleza Kusaidiwa, Na Yuko Kanisa, Hatabada Kusaidiwa, Amalienda Kaenda, Kosababu, Na Hisikua, Wenda Kunatokenya, Times, ambazo kuna mtu amekuja kutafuta usaidizi lakini ni hilo tu ikiisha amfanya nini ameenda ama akikosa ameenda unaona so ni kuuliza kuwa mnako na mikakati gani ya kuensure that wale ambao wamekuja kusaidiwa apart from kupata those physical needs bado wako ndani ya kanisa ili spiritually pia waendelee ku gain ama kama mtu amekosa basi akaenda bila mna fuatilia kujua kwa mtu ameenda kabisa ama bado yuko asante asante sana kwa maswali ambayo umetupatia ni maswali mazuri sana na nashukuru sana uh, nitajaribu kuzi um, Kuzijibu, uh, Sister Nora Tajibu, na pia uh, ndugu yangu um, uh, Elda Munga will also uh, try and help. Um, the first thing, especially to do with the needy cases that, that come, um, you realize that we have different departments and the church has tried as much as possible to simplify its service to the community because all these, um, the services that we hear mentioned here could have actually been done by the deaconate department. But you realize that if the deaconate department alone was to do them, then it, it could actually be overwhelmed. And that is the reason why you find that the services has been spread to various departments. 
Now, when it comes to identifying the real need, I think Sister Mantha mentioned that the first thing is to screen, okay? The screening happens in all the departments. So somebody walks in church today, they have attended service, and then at the end of the day, they say they have one specific need or the other. Most likely, they will land in the hands of the deacons because the deacons are the, I mean, and deaconesses. They, they are the ones who are uh, serving and monitoring the church every day. So once they land in the hands of the deacons or the deaconesses, uh, they will have a moment with this person and they will be able to identify, okay, where do you come from? What exactly is your need? By doing that, then they'll be able to direct that person to the specific department. If it is welfare, they'll be taken to the welfare department. That welfare department, once they are able to address the need of this person, they'll be able to hand this person to the home church because this person must be coming from somewhere. So it is the association with the home church that this person then will continue either to be assisted or to be nurtured to continue to be in the church, okay? So that is one way of making sure that um, members are actually tracked when they come and uh, the, the screening is done and the relevant department addresses their problem and once they are assisted, then they are linked with the right uh, home church. Now, Elder, there's a question of how do we ensure that no case that is needy is left out. Maybe let me give that to Nora, and then you'll be able to assist us. How do you ensure that um, you have a mechanism of collecting resources to meet the needs? How do you do, you do it? So let's start with Nora. Okay, um, usually on every Sabbath, um, during the service or after the service, sometimes um, during the service, we ask for visitors, people who have come to our church for the first time. And at the end of the service, there is a call that is made for all people who have visited our church or all people who are not members to meet maybe at the right side of the church. There is a team that meets these people every Sabbath. And when they meet them, they try to find out their needs. Their names are recorded, their needs are taken down, their contacts are taken. Those who are not members of this church and would like to join are directed to join the baptismal class so that they can be nurtured towards baptism. So actually, as people come, there are, there are mechanisms of reaching out to everybody who comes to our church, especially if they are not members, even if they are members and they need that service of baptism, that um, to be nurtured, there is a department. At the end of the church, they are told, meet this team here, and then that team takes their contacts, and from there, we are able to track them and meet their needs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Nora. Um, Elder, you may be able to um, answer the question of how do we um, get resources to be able to meet if there are any shortfalls, as you also make your concluding remarks. Yeah, so those resources, uh, once in a while they run low, but every so often, our plan is to do third and fourth Sabbath of the month, we should be able to announce that we, people can donate uh, financial resources and other, uh, other resources like food stuff to, for, uh, for welfare needs. And that keeps us going. I don't think we experience a lot of, uh, uh, we, we have challenges, but that keeps us going. Uh, an example of uh, last year, we got somebody who gave us, in, some, one person gave us uh, resources that were able to run us for the whole year, just one Amen. individual. Amen. Yeah, so sometimes you, you get those, those, uh, those uh, there's another important comment I want to make on the um, tracking, um, welfare to introduce a register uh, in this register, we'll cap capture your name and address and uh, a few notes about what we assisted you on. Because we realize there are people who come and uh, it may not be possible to ascertain if they are genuine or not. 
So once we capture your details, we will be able to track you with the time. And uh, you should not be able to come back again with the same, same issue or challenge later. So we hope that this register will be strong enough and will be submitted to the uh, subsequent officers so we are able to track and know who, who is it that is coming in seeking assistance and what form of assistance. In more developed countries, churches that are in the same area like uh, us and uh, uh, the Central Church can even have registers that they share. Because we realize that people can come to New Life, seek the same help, then they go to Central Church, seek the same help. So a register can be a good way of uh, tracking and controlling this kind of, of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Elder, and uh, every member of the panelists. Thank you, all of you, uh, for being with us. And uh, to conclude, I think uh, we have uh, tried to make sure that uh, we enlighten one another on the services that are, uh, we offer uh, through the deaconate, through uh, the home church, uh, through community service, and also through the welfare. And we invite each and every member of the church to be involved, uh, participate, identify areas where you can also be able to serve the church, the needs are much, as uh, our sister mentioned. Um, the reapers are few, the people to serve are few. Um, at this juncture, I want to welcome uh, Elder. Maybe you want to have a comment or you want to uh, pray for us, closing prayer. You are most welcome. Good evening and happy Sabbath. Uh, thank you members our uh, audience, both uh, internationally and locally. Uh, just to comment or to add on what my sister Nora has done, Deaconry is a ministry which is very wide. We need like one hour to teach it. If you look at the ministry handbook, all the Bible, we have a deaconess and the Bible. The church manual that you are referring to has explained the roles and the departments within the deaconate ministry. One of it is outreach. We have a visitation ministry, which is very wide. Visitation touches on hospital, bereavement, uh, members' challenges, and that is entirely what the deaconates have been doing in conjunction with the departments you can see lined up here. So that is why we wanted the membership to understand how this department integrate and work together. Basically, they are an extension of a decollet. Those who, are growing, those who grew in the Seventh-day churches long ago could see what she has done. The dress, it was called Dorcas. By then, those years, Deaconet was not that, that clear and strong. But because of the advancement and uh, the developed things, things have since changed. And now we can advance the Christianity in a way that is proper. Otherwise, we wish you well. We thank you. Thank you, the panelists, for work well done. You have expressed yourself properly. And I want to believe our members have been served and have been blessed. Thank you. May we stand up for a closing prayer. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we are once again come before your throne this evening, thanking you for allowing us to minister to you this holy day. We want to also thank you for allowing the audience that is within the church to listen to the discussion that was before them. May the discussion that was presented yield some results and bring some clarity and nurture your members and bring them closer to you so that they can serve you to your glory. Thank you for the panelists for the work that they have done. You have used them mightily. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for the organizers of this event and this day together with the communication team for allowing us to 
use the equipment that we are using to magnify your word. God give them more knowledge and ability to exercise what they know to your glory. As we now leave this place, Father, we want to commit our lives to you. We start, as we start the week tomorrow, Father, start with us. Be a blessing to our, all the families that are represented here. Be a blessing to this church. Be a blessing to your members and your children. Father, crown us with your love and use us to your glory. We ask all this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen.